G'day all, Matt Roberts here. We are still stuck with the dodgy webcam, but we have a fresh cup of tea, and we are going to have a look at task three. So task three is a task you're kind of doing on your, with us, not on your own, because there's a lot of strange things going on. Well, I shouldn't say strange. <clears throat> there's a few new things to learn that we're going to show you how to learn. Now, the skill we're picking up here is um, API diving learning how to get into the Java API to see what's in there. Modern developers, we've got massive libraries available to us, but we've got to work out how to see inside them and use them. So the task you got given is to draw a 20 by 20 grid on a 720 by 720 window. That's very easy if you're back in processing land, um, but we're not, we're in Java land, so there's a little bit more to deal with. I've got on the left here, my example solution. So when you see me looking over there, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing this, the example solution is an old one and, and I'm going to be fiddling with it a little bit. So I'm half doing this live and half doing it off an example. Um, I don't want to go too far off into the weeds, but I still want you to see what it's like to do this uh, my, or yourself. Okay. So I know I want to do this with AWT, which is a Java library. Um, I can go looking up Java documentation, but I don't love what Java documentation gives me. Uh, a lot of it's out of date because Java is so old. The, the Java API, though, is a generally good, safe place to go looking. Now, I'm Java 8 in this course, so I'll just make sure I get the right API. Java SE Platform 8, good. And I kind of know where I'm looking, so I'll do, let's see if I can get this to snap well, nicely. And that's this one. Um, so, back over to my actual code in the main. So I kind of know where I'm going. I know I'm going to be using Java AWT and a tiny bit of Java Swing to get something onto the screen. And then I want those topics dropped. They're not in this course. Uh, we need them to get something on the screen though. One of the designs in this course is that we do graphics and user interfaces ourselves instead of relying on libraries uh, because that exposes lots of fun things for us to think about. But we we can't actually draw on the screen by ourselves. We do have to hook into the libraries at least somewhere and then try and do as much of it ourselves as we can. So as the course goes on and we ask you to do functionality X or functionality Y, don't go looking up how to do that in Swing or AWT. You might get an answer, but it's not the answer that's got to do with this course. But we do have to hook into it to get us going. So I want a um, a J frame. I know that a J frame is the only way I'm going to get something on the screen, and then I really just want to control the, the canvas on that J frame. So my main class, instead of being a main class by itself, uh, has to extend a J frame with a rock. And now I'm like, what the heck's a J frame? Well, you can see that the, the VS Code's helpfully telling me it's from JVAC Swing because it knows all the standard libraries, and I'm going to have to import that JVAC so JavaX was Java extensions, swing.jframe, I think I also have to use a jpanel, um, but after that I actually want to use the java.awt.star, that's where most of my graphics is going to come from, uh, the, the Java abstract windowing toolkit, it just needs the more basic graphics. So I'm extending a JFrame. What does it mean to extend a JFrame? Well, it's a thing that can pop up on the screen. Um, all you have to do with a JFrame is say what's going to happen when it runs. Uh, but you'd still have to actually make it run. So main is the JFrame, but main also has the main method. <clears throat> so what the main method now does is build a new version of itself. Just making sure I'm using the good name. So this, this object is building itself, which feels a bit weird, but it's a static main method that's doing it. You should think of the static main method as kind of being separate. So it's built one of itself, and then because that thing it's built is a JFrame, it can just run. Yeah, something will happen, but we don't know what yet. Um, so I better define that run method to explain what I mean by running. So the run method is on the main class. So I'll put it in here. It can be private, I suppose, but I just get in the habit of doing um, public everything here because privacy doesn't really matter 
in this context. Um, actually, I don't think I need the main method, the run method, just yet. I'll get to the run method in a minute. Uh, the main, uh, I'll need a constructor though, so why don't we comment this out? I might have jumped ahead a little bit. Control. Nope, control. That one. Oh, I'm trying to learn the keyboard shortcuts as we go. I'm not succeeding. So let's close that one and just do it by hand. <laughs> I'm not normally a VS Code user, but I should be by the end of the course. Uh, so this constructs the main window and then just whatever. But we better write a constructor. So there'll be a built in constructor that it uses, but that doesn't do much of interest. So we make our main constructor. Now here we're going to tie into a bunch of things that a JFrame knows how to do. And if I go to Javax swing JFrame in here, oh, Gunjifar, Javax swing. So it's just Javax swing and then down in the all classes section I should see the JFrame up here. Often you're doing a Google search to get to these things but I know where I'm going. This shows me all the methods available on that JFrame. It takes me a lot of experimentation and maybe a few tutorials to learn what I really want to be doing here. Um, I know that I want to set up the default close operation because JFrames, when they open, you can't close them. <laughs> You've got to control C the whole application. Uh, so set default close operation, and I just want to set it to, and what, I want it to exit on close. I know these are the special magic things, but if I look in that documentation, they'll all be there. So uh, if I look for set, um, so default close operation, I'll click on that, and it'll tell me the different um, things I can do on close, do nothing, hide, dispose, exit, exit's what I want, which closes down the whole thing. Uh, let's just run this to see what it does. I'm curious. So Java's doing its thing, and running does absolutely nothing. It's running, and that's that. Not super surprising. Because uh, these things don't actually appear on the screen yet. I think set visible true. Uh, pack is, is useful for other things. Um, let's set visible true, see if that's enough to get it on the screen. Oh, we haven't even set it, given it a size yet. So it's probably still not appearing on the screen. Oh, look, no, something's appeared. There it is. It's this thing up here in the top left. And JFrame has appeared. Good. Okay. Now what I really want to do is I want to put onto this a canvas, which is just representative of a sheet of paper that I can draw on. So I'm going to make myself a canvas as a, a subclass. And it's unfortunate we have to jump to subclasses so soon, but we can do that. We'll learn a little bit more about well, we'll learn more about subclasses, I guess, as we go along. They don't get huge menus. I could make a separate class, but it's a waste of um, file space. Public class canvas. So this is my canvas that I want to be able to draw directly on. And it turns out you can draw straight onto something called a JPanel, which comes from the uh, library as well. So I better import the JPanel as well. So I'll just go to importing star from Swing. Some people prefer to import everything explicitly. Um, I tend not to. So, uh, now I'm going to get rid of this serialized error window uh, in a minute. Same on main. Well, actually, why don't we do that now? Do I have the magic incantation over here? Yes. So, this extend this error that comes up, the serializable class main does not declare a static variable, static final serial version UID field or type long. This is like a Java programming convention. Because classes might be serialized, which means turned into text and stored somewhere, um, and then you want to read them back out, one of the things to make a serialized class work well is that it should have a version new ID. Um, we're not writing this class out to something and reading this class back in, and that is just going to confuse the situation for us when we're learning about programming. So I'm going to avoid it. And I can avoid it by telling VS Code um, a brand new setting, which is just please don't, please ignore this problem. And I think that'll take hold eventually. Let's see if it does. Oh, that's a better error, but it's still got the original one. 
Maybe I have to restart the um, the something to make it happen, or maybe I just no. Okay, I've chucked it in now. We'll see if it goes away at some point. If it doesn't, I'll keep trying to make it go away. What do they say on the quick fix? Um, so most of these errors have a quick fix. Add default, add generated. No, I don't want to add a serial ID because it can make things ugly. I'll show you what it does. Maybe, maybe not. Didn't do anything. Looks like that's a problem with the, the plugin. All right, all right, back to the actual action. See if we can get that missing serial ID to take hold at some point. Um, close you down. We don't need you again. This is just a place where we can put some um, uh, preferences to get the Visual Studio Code users. These are from Eclipse, it's true, but Visual Studio Code knows how to use them. <coughs> All right, what does my canvas do? Uh, my canvas is a J panel, which is just going to go straight on top of the, the J frame and that I can draw onto, because you can always draw onto J panels. They've got a special paint method, which is very useful. So I'll, I'll give it a constructor. And in the constructor, I'm going to say what size the canvas wants to be, because you saw how the J frame was tiny. The J frame will be the size of whatever has to go inside it. Um, so if I set the preferred size, now size comes in as as not just like two, well, I think you can do it as two numbers, but it, another way to do it is with a whole dimension object. And this is a Java style of programming. Everything's an object. Even the number 720, 720 next to each other uh, for X and Y are a dimension. And that dimension would have needed to be imported, but I think it's coming from AWT. Uh, so that error about not using AWT went away. All right, nice. So now we've got a preferred size. I think if we run it again, um, we'll find that it's bigger because the preferred size will take account. Nope, not bigger yet. Ah, I know why it's not bigger, because I made a canvas, but I haven't added the canvas to the J-frame. So let's do that. So to add something to a J-frame, we'll first make it. Then we add it. And this set content pane sounds a bit strange, but what it means is the J frame is just empty at the moment. We're saying what should be the content of the J frame? Well, it's our canvas. Nice. Now that's where the pack comes into it because the pack method will, will resize the J frame so that it's big enough for the J panel. So the J panel is that gray section there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I'm going to drop this run because I don't think we need it at all. I think I've got way far ahead of myself. Next. So the worksheet told me that I wanted to draw a 20 by 20 grid. So how do I draw onto a canvas? Well, can J panels have a paint method. All I have to do is define that paint method. And I'm overriding an existing method, so I'm going to add the override keyword. So this is all, all this machinery is set up. This paint method um, is already being called on that uh, J panel. It's just that it's um, an empty paint method, so it's not doing anything. But if we override it with our own paint method, uh, we can make it do fun things. And the paint method is always passed in a graphics object, which represents the grayness on the panel. It just represents the thing you can draw on. It wants me to say that's a void. Okay, so this is the spot where any drawing I do will go onto the onto the screen. Okay. Well, how do I draw onto a graphics object? Well, I'll probably come back up here and start looking in the documentation again. Graphics is in AWT, not in Javax Swing, so I've got to come back up here to java.awt there. And on the left-hand panel, I can find the graphics object. Yeah, there's a graphics and a graphics 2D. Uh, one's a subclass of the other, but we can just do everything off, off graphics. 
in this course. So you can see the methods available on it are the kinds of things we might do on a draw. Clear a rectangle, draw a 3D rectangle, draw some characters, <coughs> draw an image, draw an oval, a polygon. For us, we're going to draw some lines. There are multiple ways to get a grid on the screen. We can either draw a bunch of vertical lines and a bunch of horizontal lines, or we can draw a bunch of rectangles. Ultimately, drawing rectangles works better in this course, so let's do it that way. So it's gonna, I'm going to have to draw the instructions said 20 by 20 rectangles, each of them 35 pixels high. So let's make the for loop for that. Uh, it wanted me to start at position 10, and then I was less than 710, because it wanted a border of 710 on the other side. Um, do I want to draw one at 710? No, I don't. And I has to go up by 35 each time. And I'm um, drawing a grid, so I'm going to have to do... Let's just do one line for now. So draw rect, I think, is what I want, but it's on the graphics object, so it's g dot draw rect. Good, and it wants an x and a y position, so the x is 0, and let's just make the y position 10 for now. That uh, i, sorry, in 10. And it wanted something else, didn't it? Where did your parameters go? Uh, nope, it's gotten a bit confused. So let's come over here to see what draw rect wants. It wants an x and a y and a width and a height. So we know the width and the height is 35. 35 each time. So that'll draw at least one line of rectangles, I hope. I think it's going to draw it on the ball, on the grey background though. So maybe I should draw colour in the background first. Hmm. Let's try it and see. There we go. Yep, they've been drawn in the background and they're not filled in because draw rectangle doesn't fill them in. I actually want to fill rectangle. So this works a little bit differently to processing. You've got a draw function and a fill. So if I do fill rectangle and control F5, then they'll get drawn, I think, with whatever the fill color is. The fill color is black, which is not really what I wanted. I wanted a fill color of white and a background of black. So with processing, uh, that's it's slightly different to processing. I have to set the um, stroke, I think, set color. And with colors, I can just do color dot black. Yeah. Okay. So the way I have to do this, I think, that's the way I'm going to do it is first I'm going to set the color to black and then I'm going, oh sorry, first I'm going to set the color to white to make sure the order comes out correct. And then I'm going to fill a white rectangle and then I'm going to set the color to black and draw the outline of the rectangle. and this gets me much more what I wanted. All right, that's basically what I wanted. But now I want to do that another 20 times down. So this is going to have to be a nested loop. J equals, J will start from 10 and go to less than 710 and go up by 35 as well. And that puts this new one down here. And all of this needs to tab in further, so that would be... No, still don't know, <laughs> still don't know my shortcuts. Um, I better go off and oh, learn them, I suppose. <clears throat> okay, I think that's what I want. I think that's going to draw my grid. So the paint method is where the action is, but the paint method is getting called because the canvas is on the J-frame and the J-frame is visible. This is all the internal workings of the, the swing in AWT. From here on, oh, didn't work. So let's have a look at the problems. Abort, syntax error on something that doesn't belong there. Um, from here on in, we're going to take control of the rendering. We're not going to rely on swing or AWT anymore because once we've hit this paint method, we're in control. Once we've got our own canvas, we're in control. 
we need the J-frame in the panel just to get going, and then we're like, yeah, we're not interested in anything else you have to say. Alright, maybe a tiny bit more. Alright, I've broken something. Ah, I've broken it because that's an I, not a J. And stop it from up there, and Control F5. Nope, that's not working. Ah, because I didn't update the, you all saw that while you were watching this, didn't you? That should be the J. That should be the J. This is why it would be better if I could do the live streaming of this. You could tell me while I'm doing it. There we go, we've got our grid. Very nice. So we've, we've hooked ourselves into, um, oh, now your local window is not used. That's true. It doesn't look like it's used, but just building it does all the hard work. So we can ignore that that problem. Um, we've hooked into the, the bits we need to know about Java. We've got control now. Uh, hopefully we can do the other parts. Is there anything I've missed out on here? Nope. This is the tips video, so uh, it's more than just tips. It's pretty much how to do it. Ah, oh, but the next tasks. Yeah, the next tasks you'll be doing by yourself. Okay, that's all for now.